AFC and NFC will square off. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Dallas Cowboys on Monday night. We are sandwiched between Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas in Arlington at the luxurious AT&T Stadium. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Happy to be on hand. I'm Brandon Gordon with Charles Davis. And before we kick, partner, your keys to the game, please. Well, my keys are on the defensive side of the ball for both teams. And the big one, making sure you avoid giving up the big play. These safeties are going to get tested all game long. Their job, keep the ball in front of them, tackle people, make them run extra plays in order to try and score. Set for football now at AT&T Stadium. Brandon Aubrey has the honors, and we are underway here in Arlington. And we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff. This will be a touchback. So the Titans set to go to work for the first time. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. Tell you what, partner, he might just be a rookie, but he certainly looks the part of a veteran NFL starter, and he carries himself like one leading the offense out there. In a lot of ways, he has advanced as a first-year quarterback, and he came in and was right at home with this offense. And the result here, a pickup of eight, leaves him with two to go on second down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Here's Pollard again. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Third and short. It's Levis. And that is incomplete. Down is a key down in any game you play in third down defense. Something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On uh, fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. Deep to return is Cavante Turpin. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13 yard line here. Time for Dak Prescott and the Dallas offense to go to work. Prescott, of course, the former fourth-round pick in 2016 out of Mississippi State. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure, and he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. They start the drive with Vaughn. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Those are the types of run, Charles, that they say this first-year running back can provide a lot more of in the future. He made it look easy, didn't he, picking up that first down. Some have described him as a diamond in the rough with a lot of polish, nice little buffing. This guy could be one of the top backs going forward. First down, Prescott. Here's second and ten. Now, 
Here's Prescott. And that's complete to Colts. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They'll try and run for it with Vaughn. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 14 yards, good for a Cowboy first down. Two carries for him now on the opening drive, both for good yardage. And based on film study, they thought that there was a chance to spring him more than once for some pretty good yardage in this game. So operating from Tennessee territory now, here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Here's Prescott. He finds his man complete. That's Ferguson. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. The well, first drive here and the first time that we've called the big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game goes on. Meanwhile, Prescott's throw there caught by Gallo. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Well, another completion right there. And again, Charles, good time in the pocket. That offensive line on this opening drive been really solid they've been more than solid they've really tamped down the pass rush and kept him safe in the pocket able to look around find his target and deliver he's got to make sure he tells the offensive line in the huddle thanks fellas let's keep it going give him a couple on the carry there second and eight From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Kevontae Turpin, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt, they're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. 23 yards on the tuck and run. But Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> but I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense. And now, as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Pollard going to try the right side. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. But I continually hear from running backs and offensive linemen, 
is how often they're actually getting together to watch film so they can get in sync with each other, understand blocking patterns better, how running back likes to cut, what he wants to do. And boy, it all came together on that one. That's one where they watch it and say, hey, we, we did everything we were supposed to do right there. That looked like the play we drew up Absolutely. and designed. And then we got to see it unfold in real time. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. DeAndre Hopkins. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Titans are an extra point away from drawing level. Now the extra is coming. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Prescott from the gun. And this one quickly to land. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Lamb's first catch of the game. Good for a first down. Prescott now. He gets it to Cooks. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, 21 yards. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. He finds his man complete. It's Ferguson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Prescott. Sack back at the 32. Credit the sack there to Arden Key. But well, they've been fighting and scratching and clawing for that first sack in the game, and it turns out to be a big one. Not just a short one right there behind the line. First one they get, 10-plus yards on the guy who has the legs to escape most of these. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Looking to throw. Prescott. He'll find Vaughn complete out of the backfield. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Hey, 
Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. He's got his target. That's complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. So illegal touching, not one you see often. It's going to wipe away a first down. Very simply, if you're a receiver, you can't set foot out of bounds and then be the first to catch the football. Side judge, right there on the play, made the call. And this one is right down the middle. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So that's a seven play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Now, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. So after the made field goal, back out is Aubrey to kick this away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Osa Odigizawa collapses the pocket and drops him for a loss of three. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and he just locked people down. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. It's a gain of 34. It's not often that you'll find offensive and defensive guys that will agree on much, but one place they find common ground, you've got to protect or attack the middle of the field. And no one was there. What a big play moving it downfield. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Levis to throw it. Pass to the tight end, Wiley. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's him. They'll run left with Pollard. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. <laughs> Levis sets up to throw here. And he is caught. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. In motion is Phillips. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Ten seven, our score after one, right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. 
Now a second and ten. As they've got it as we resume action. Here's Spears on second down. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. Levis out of the shotgun now. On the out route, he's got Burks. And it's a Titans touchdown. Traylon Burks, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Titans have taken the lead. An excellent, long, sustained offensive drive. And now they can look across the field and see a defense that looks a little bit beaten down. Right now, as an offensive coordinator, you're thinking to yourself, can I dial up the knockout punch? The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was Traylon Burks capping things off with a touchdown catch. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. The Cowboys about set to take over on offense. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. They'll wind up losing three there on the sack. Good pressure, and it's second down. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. A second down throw for Prescott. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. On third down, it's Prescott. And this is going to be incomplete. Ah, oh, that's well done defensively. They get the pressure they needed on third down. All the receivers are locked up tight, and they force that quarterback to just throw it away. On is the punter, Brian Anger, to kick this one away. Fielded at about the 28. It's a 47-yard punt but they did give up 10 on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Will Levis in the offense back out there. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. Levis. His throw incomplete. That ball was tipped in the air, and while it ultimately fell incomplete, it caused a few anxious moments for the guy slinging it who's had quite a day. He knows how to get it into the end zone. He's throwing it really, really well. And maybe Lady Luck is on his side because he avoided his first interception of the contest. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively. The Blackaboos were 
receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lock one toward the bench. Not too close, mind you, and live to pump the football. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Second and nine now from the 21. On play action, Prescott. He'll find Lamb crossing the formation for the catch. Here comes third and about a foot. A give running right is Vaughn. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Running behind center with Vaughn. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there. Second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down, Prescott. He finds his man complete. That's Ferguson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now a dump off here complete. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On second down, it's Vaughn. And it's a solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. There was a little space there, yes, but that was a well-executed run by the rookie. It was, and he wasn't one of the higher-rated rookie running backs coming out. He was probably on the next tier. But let me tell you something. If he becomes more consistent and continues to have that drive to be one of the best, we'll see more of that in the future. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Ferguson. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Up the middle, it's Vaughn. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Staying on the ground with Vaughn. And able to get him down, but he does reach 
past the five. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. What's the old adage, partner? Don't judge the book by its cover, because this guy, he takes the mantra that he'll go down with a brisk gust of wind and sets it on its head. Great effort there to break a tackle and come up with a nice gain. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. Good solid gain on first down, about what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. From the two now, second and goal. Vaughn is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Prescott on third and goal. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Brandon Cooks. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys have retaken the lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Aubrey good with a PAT, and it's now 17-14. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Out come the Titans now. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside and finished off the runner for a loss. Second down, Pollard again. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Well, now after all of this, hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. The offense on third down today, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 14. Back to throw, it's Levis. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Levis back to throw. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Yeah. 
Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Here's Levis. They'll set up the screen for Spears. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Now Levis. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded just inside the 20. A punt of 46, a return of five. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good, his guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Now Prescott. He'll find Lamb. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one a gain of 20 and a first down. Prescott. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. And again, it's Prescott. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Looking to throw, Prescott. First down, and they're in field goal range as well. It's a down inside the 20. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And this one is right through. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know, virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal.
So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. So we have come to halftime here in Dallas with the Cowboys out in front. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Cowboys were treated to a fine first half from number four, quarterback Dak Prescott. He had a touchdown pass in that first half, helping his guys to a halftime advantage. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Cowboys will get the football first here, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in quarter three. And they have a very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. The Cowboy offense set to go to begin this third quarter. And Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. Give him 18 on that one, and it's a Dallas first down. On the counter, it's Vaughn. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Here's a handoff to Vaughn. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Throwing, Prescott. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 18. That third down conversion, good for 23. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping him on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Vaughn on the handoff. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Now it's a bootleg with Prescott. Touchdown, Cowboys! Dak Prescott with a connection to CeeDee Lamb. And the Cowboys take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. 
That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. And with a successful two-point try, the QB rolling out, I would imagine on the defense that makes it tough. When he goes out, he's got the option to run or pass. Yeah, it really does. If you decide not to bring extra people or extra pressure, maybe you have to have a spy on the quarterback, someone to account for him, because oftentimes that is the unaccounted for player. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Levis sets up to throw here. He finds his man complete. It's Phillips. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. A big play that time for the Titans. 48 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Running right, it's Pollard. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. And not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. In motion is Phillips. And now a fake there on the jet sweep as they'll get to Pollard. And he gets it inside the ten to the nine. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected. But that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. Just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Defense able to get there, swarm to the football. Zilch, zero, not of there for the offense, Charles. Yeah, it really was an example of good team defense, wasn't it? Everyone handled their responsibilities, and they held them to no gain. On second down, it's Pollard. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Levis from the gun. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Will Levis, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Titans have cut it back within a score. Hey, you're down on the scoreboard. But now your offense is in close, and this is where, as a quarterback, you say, I've got to make a play here. Doesn't matter whether it's a pinpoint throw 
for a scramble like this one. He takes matters into his own hands and delivers a touchdown run. Extra point splits the uprights, and they're within seven now at 28-21. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Out comes C.D. Lamb and the rest of the Dallas offense. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once, but boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, it, you do. It you makes get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. Here's second and four from the 24. Out of the gun, it's a give to Vaughn. A little jerk. And this is going to be a Cowboys first down as he's able to take this up to the 30-yard line. And this is beginning to border on dominance. Another strong run that picks up a first down. You've got to wonder if the defense coordinator is wondering if I even go to goal line defense in any situation now to try and slow down this running game. A first down throw for Prescott. He finds his man complete. That's Ferguson. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. Well, officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Prescott now from the 50. Complete. And he's got this down to the 35. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. They'll run here with Vaughn. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great, because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. A second down throw for Prescott. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Prescott to throw it. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Three touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys go up by two touchdowns. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Now the extra point up and good by Aubrey. And the lead now up to 14. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. 
And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Second and seven. Levis to throw off play action. Swinging this out for Pollard. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. So he stopped for no gain. Third and seven now. That was impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes. And they were able to put the receiver on the ground. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Out of the gun again to Spears. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. He's been terrific so far. And it's fielded at the 34. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, 9 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 43. They'll start with the option. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. And that's caught out wide by Cooks. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A game there of 21 yards. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. Vaughn on first and 10. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Now Prescott. And this one into the hands of Vaughn. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 20-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys with the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead, first down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it, and you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down, have to stop them, have to get the football back, but eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they'll have it first and goal. I'd sure love to offer some advice to the defensive coordinator, but his guys are just getting run over by an offense that's executing like a well-oiled machine. 
A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. To throw is Prescott. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground, and now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Here's Prescott. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Peyton Hendershot from four yards out. And the Cowboys have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. Well, it seemed like they were so focused elsewhere they forgot about the tight end spot and he's the one that burns him there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think there might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop them from all angles. This time, the tight end gets them. Aubrey good with a PAT. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So after the touchdown, Aubrey now to kick this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Levis out of the shotgun now. He finds his man complete. It's Phillips. Four yards the pickup, first down. Levis looking to throw. He finds his man, Pollard. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll make it second down. They'll throw it again with Levis. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Titans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. Levis to throw it. That's dumped off to Pollard. 
And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. So the drive will continue after the conversion on fourth. They'll work from the 20 on first down. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. And tip your cap to Demarcus Lawrence. Nice play defensively. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Now Levis. And his throw is incomplete. The Pro Bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. On third down, it's Pollard. Then he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Desperation time now. Here's Levis. And that is incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Well, past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Here's Prescott. Complete. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. So possession goes over here on the punt, and it'll be Titan football. First and 10, it's Levis. A short throw taken in by Conquo. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. Working from the gun, here's Levis. It's complete to Hopkins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. A second down throw from Levis. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And Levis going back to the air. And this is going to be incomplete. I tell you what, that's a veteran play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And Dallas, they'll take over in terrific field position. Well, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Hey, defense, you got me? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Again, a run with Vaughn. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Here is third and five. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot, it'll be fourth and inches. And the move from Mike McCarthy is going to be to keep the offense on the field here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Prescott, that's Gallup on the slam. And he is going to have the Cowboys first down. No problem there. They get the first by plenty on fourth and inches. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take go like turtle at this point. You just go ahead and play. This is Vaughn. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Two yards to go, second down. Prescott. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. Prescott on third and two. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Cowboys are going to have first and goal coming up as
Bengals are able to convert there on third and two. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. On the ground with Vaughn. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Again, it'll be Vaughn. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. 96 yards rushing for him now to this point. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, we're looking at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. This defense bending but not breaking. It's a gain of three. It's now fourth and goal. Well, there was a trust factor in that call. Turning and handing it to the big man in the backfield trying to pick up the first down. But how about the defense? They were ready for him, and they were able to stop him. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level for both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high flying, but they took care of the ball. Yeah, they did, and just keeping it clean in a game like this with all these points, you don't see that very often, even at the highest level. Job well done by both sides. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington. <laughs>